right now. Listen up. Three, two, one. It's showtime. That's great. This is ridiculous. 99.3 The Truth. You can't handle the truth right now. Ooh. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Let's do it. Hit it. It's time for Max World. And here we go. Everybody here. Everybody here. Let's get it started. Call Matt, 244-0077, or text 809-0993. It's showtime, everybody! Showtime! Exclusively on 99.3 The Truth. Boom! It's showtime, says the donkey, seven minutes after three o'clock on the 26th day of September in the Lord's year 2016. I'm J. Michael McCoy, back in the saddle again after uh, being gone uh, all weekend to the Wild at Heart uh, boot camp, 169 men, plus me. And uh, I'll tell you about that in a little bit. It was, it, I just, <laughs> I don't know why a man wouldn't do this. I don't know why. It's not the money. It, it, it's not the time. And it was, it was uh, one of the most... Um, Holy Spirit filled uh, uh, times in my life. Incredible curriculum, amazing teachers, and uh, um, life changing, life changing. And, and I'm, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, of course, everybody's here. Chris is here, and Frank's here. And uh, Frank, I met your uh, what was it? Your cousin? Yeah, he cousin. was there. He was having a really good time. He had some interesting things to say about you. <laughs> Some I can repeat on the radio. Yeah, probably. But he loves his uh, cousin Frank, I'll tell you that. And he's really proud of uh, what you've accomplished in your life now being a uh, part-time uh, uh, um, Pharisee <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> and he, uh, he, he asked me if that name I call you, pharisaical, yeah. is an actual word. Yeah. I said, if Mac uses it, it's a real word. <laughs> you can look it up in the Funk and Wagnall. Right there it is. <coughs> anyway, Chris, you were going to say something. Oh, no, I, I didn't have anything to say. Well, tell us about your cards. Oh, oh. <laughs> People can go to Facebook and download a little creation of uh, Chris's. Yeah, if you're, friends, if you're friends with me on Facebook, I was on Facebook a little bit earlier, and I noticed that a bunch of people had drinking games for tonight's debate between Donald Trump and uh, Hillary Clinton, and being a person that has no interest in playing a drinking game, um, uh, I thought, well, what am I going to do? And so I created bingo cards that use a lot of the same words. And so if you're friends with me on Facebook, you'll see on my Facebook page right now, I've got four different bingo cards. It's the same set of words, just mixed up around like a regular old bingo card would be. Some of the some of the funny things that I think will happen or will be said, uh, no doubt we'll have the wall mentioned. Uh, Russia will be mentioned. Email will be mentioned. Uh, I put cough in there. That's uh, No one will mention cough. I just anticipate it happening. You know, Mac mentioned something that will probably be mentioned tonight. What's that? Boom! Showtime, says the donkey. Somebody, somebody's going to say that? Sure. Don't you know that the donkey is the representative of the DNC party? Oh. Oh, okay. So somebody's going right. to... Lewinsky's in there. You think Monica Lewinsky's going to come up? Do you think Trump's going to go that dirty and bring up Monica Lewinsky? Why is that dirty? Well, I mean, I, mean I, want to, I know I'm not answering your question, but I want to back up. I don't know whether Trump will bring him bring her up. I'd say better chance that she he, he, he will than not. But why is that dirty? It got him. It got him impeached. Oh, I get. I understand that. But that was Clinton, he, he, that was Clinton's mistake rather than Hillary's mistake. Right. Ma, 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 no. ma, ma. I don't think so. No. You know, Tammy Wynette, stand by your man. You know, remember that interview with uh, Hillary? You're probably too young, but I was alive then. I know you were alive, but were you watching uh, Baba Walters and ABC 2020? Anyway, what what an incident? Rosie O'Donnell and some of the more radical feminist elements in the country were very upset that Hillary did not leave Bill and continues to be the victim. So you think that's how it's going to come up, that uh, she did not no, stand I, with women? I doubt that her name will be mentioned. Yeah, I don't oh, know. I don't, I don't know. 
I, I think that there will be mentions of of Bill's philandering, possibly, if Hillary wants to go there. If she well, starts jabbing Trump, he's going to punch her back. Okay, but all right, so that's the point then. I mean, let's stop playing with words. If Trump mentions Bill's philandering, he's talking about Lewinsky. You can't talk about Bill's philandering without it ending up on Lewinsky, because the Lewinsky was the big deal. Well, Dolly Kyle Browning, Jennifer Flowers, uh, Juanita Broderick, uh, Paula but Jones. Nothing, but nothing stuck until that little blue dress showed up. Well, you do know why that showed up, don't you? Oh, so awful. Um, so why awful. did it show up? No, I guess I well, don't know Well, because that. Paula Jones was trying to show that, that Bill had a precedent of doing things like this, and she was trying to take Bill into a court of law, and she was trying to find substantiating evidence and people who would come in and corroborate her story, and that's how the blue dress and uh, the lady who brought it forward all got drug into the case, and, and the whole thing came down to he was trying to prevent Paula Jones from having her her day in court. That's why he got his, his lawyer's license took, taken away, and that's why he had to pay a fine and supposedly had to give Paula Jones a public apology. 515-244-0077. That's the number you can call if you'd like to uh, hear your, or if you'd like to have your voice heard on the radio today. And it's not just hearing your voice. It's the comment, the opinion, the thoughts. Uh, I'm asking a simple question. What do you think is the most important topic in tonight's debate? That's a good question. Jobs. Jobs? Okay. I'm going to write down jobs. Bob, what do you think it is? Terrorism, security. Terrorism. Okay. Frank, or I mean Chris? Um, I'd like to hear some discussion on the economy. Does that mean jobs? No. No? That's spending. Government spending. Trump's... Less of it. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, Trump has made his bread and butter through the whole campaign season on jobs and trade. Infrastructure and immigration was his four staples of his campaign. But I think his biggest traction, if he's going to attract independents and Democrats, and he's going to bite into Hillary's voting base and voting block, he's got to talk jobs, the economy, and trade because that's – all affects the unions, which generally go Democratic. So if he can if he can stay on message with jobs and trade, uh, that's what he needs to do. And if she decides she wants to go in the gutter, I'm sure he will oblige her. But I do not foresee Trump going in the gutter first. 515-244-0077, or you can get a hold of us at the, uh, oh, 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 the Service Legends Truth text line. At 515-809-0993. Who was the last person to sit in my chair? Vander Weasel. Shane Vanderhart. Shane Vanderhart. <laughs> Everything has changed. I mean, my OCD is going off crazy <laughs> stuff. The, vo- the headphone volume, the position of the fan, the keyboard. <laughs> my stinks. And you know why he done that, don't you? It's because you never call him the same name. <laughs> Keep calling him. Sh- we we decided on uh, Shane Vander Weasel. That's what we decided on Friday from decaffeinated thoughts. From decaffeinated yes. thoughts. Yes. All right. Let's go to the phones where uh, uh, Pastor Gary Moon is standing by. Gary, how are you? Well, Mac, I'll tell you, I'm I'm not in very good shape. I'm in the hospital here. They got to remove my gallbladder, and you know I'm going to be 74 years old, and that's going to take place tomorrow. At uh, I'm at Mercy West right now in room 5107. And if Frank or Bob or you would like to stop up, uh, you know, I'd love to see you. This is a pretty dangerous surgery at my age, you know, and I love all you guys. And I, I, I still have that book for you, brother. It, it's in my car. But I had this gallbladder attack Saturday, and uh, it, it really put me out. So I'm going downtown to the hospital, Mercy, the main hospital, tomorrow. Right now, I'm out on West out here. But anyway, uh, if things don't go right, I, I hope they do, and you guys can pray for me, you know, because uh, the doctor just explained all the all the dangers and everything. But uh, but I really love all of you, you know, and uh, so if any of you want to stop up tonight, why, I'm in room 5107 at Mercy West. So... Uh, All right. Well, Gary, we uh, we obviously care a tremendous amount about you 
And uh, I think we should just uh, let's let's lift a prayer up here, can we, for just a few minutes? If you're driving down the road, don't shut your eyes. Quite frankly, I don't know why you have to close your eyes when you pray anyway, but that's okay if you do. I do sometimes too. So, in fact, I do here sitting here in the studio because I can do that. So, Papa, you know, your, uh, your adopted son named Gary has uh, been a uh, loyal disciple of yours for so many years and brought joy and peace to so many people troubled lives. And now the doctors are going to cut into his body, already weak with disease, to remove his gallbladder. And we just ask that your healing hands uh, guide those hands of the surgeon and all those around and give Gary the uh, confidence and lifting up of his spirit to know that, um, you know, should he not be healed in this life, he will be completely healed in the next. And whatever your will is to be done, Lord, we ask that your will be done and bring comfort and peace to those around Gary. And we say this in the name of our Father, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And with our arms wrapped around him, wrapped around his ankles at the foot of the cross, we say this in his name. Amen. Amen. All right. We are going to take a break. And when uh, we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what you think the most important topic is tonight. Jobs, terrorism, economy is what I've got from the three. What do you think it is, Jeb? You're a young spry pup. Do you think it's something different than those? Uh, well, I hope it's economy, like Chris was saying, but terrorism, I think, is the biggest issue. Second Amendment. Yeah, oh, yeah that'd be nice. Second Amendment. All right, Frank, you get two. No, that I would say that's Jeb's. I like that, but all right, that's Jeb's. What do you think it is? What do you think's the most important topic? And who do you think's going to pop first, Trump or Hillary? Oh, oh man. What do they say? A hundred million people are going to be watching tonight? I'll be one of them. I'll be one of them, too. Either that or on DVR, live here on The Truth. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you. Sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. 
from the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 321, 21 minutes after 3 o'clock on the 26th day of September in oh, Jesus' third millennium here on Earth. Coming up uh, at the 4 o'clock hour, what's going on with senior citizens? What are the troubles, the challenges, the difficulties that senior citizens are facing today that perhaps uh, we didn't face 40, 50 years ago? Uh, Mark Poole from Seniors on the Move will be in-house, and we'll be talking about that here on the radio on 99.3 The Truth. So, um, well, I'll, I'll get to Wild at Heart a little bit later. I've got all my notes here that I took, and I've got some really important things I want to share with you. Uh, and it was kind of interesting because uh, I was kind of a note-taking fool. And usually I don't do that. Usually I just just kind of let it sink in, and those, those things I'm supposed to remember, I'll remember. But for some reason, Jesus wanted me to write stuff down, and I've got page after page after page. I don't know how many pages, 30 pages, uh, you know, like three pages per session of all the stuff that we talked about at Wild at Heart. But I just hope that somebody puts on a sticky note on their refrigerator or in a closet or something to remember Wild at Heart because, um, you know, I've been to a lot of Christian teaching seminars or whatever you want to call them retreats weekends and i never ever ever got so much meat out of one than i did at this one and it was just over and over and over and over emotionally by the time this thing was over i was shot in fact i'm not so sure that i'm not still a little shot because there was so much there to uh so much there to soak in so anyway, we'll talk about that in, in just a little bit when we come back. Right now, we're talking about the big, uh, the big debate tonight. And I, I, I think there's going to be people who have no interest in this election who are going to just watch this train wreck. Well, it's up against, what was it, uh, the WWE and there's, and there's yeah, the WWE football game. WWE and Monday Night Football. Monday Night Football, WWE, yeah. And they're still talking 100 million plus people. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not watch wrestling for this. <laughs> wrestling? Yeah. Well, I, I believe normally it or don't. not. I normally and, don't and, and watch wrestling. But. Chris found this a little amazing, but, they're, but WWE yeah. outrate rate Monday Night Football. Uh, I'm not sure if it does it on a weekly basis. Look at that rabbit go. Well, no, but what? Man, look at that rabbit go. That rabbit is running. The method to this madness here. Okay. The method is, 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 is this just coincidental that a debate is lined up on a Monday night when there's an NFL football game and WWE wrestling outrates Monday night football for the most part? Do you think that's just coincidence or do you think... Hillary and the DNC had something to do with this, so, trying to suppress the people who would watch. But they're going to watch anyway because it's going to be the best show in town. Well, and the, the news clips tomorrow. I mean, you can turn on Fox News anytime tonight or tomorrow and uh, see all the, the fantastic fun. It won't be uninterrupted. Now, however, doesn't usually C-SPAN, don't they usually run these things again and again and again in their full glory? No, not cut up or anything. I think they do. They, they might. I think they do. So they anyway. The rights to this. And I'm hoping, now here's the deal. I don't have CNN. This is going to be on NBC, right? I, I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. You know, the, 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 um, the debates have not been on uh, regular channels this year. They've all been, I don't think so. I think they've all been on one of the cable news channels. MSNBC had one, Fox had one, CNN had one. I don't think... Aren't they all going to show it? I mean, all of the major news? I don't know. Is the Truth Network carrying the debate? No. Really? Yeah, we're not. Salem Radio Network News is not going to run the debate? Not to my knowledge, no. Why? They don't want to preempt Steve? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. They don't want to, they don't want to get in Steve Dace's way. Mm -hmm. Now, Lester Holt is going to be the major moderator. So, isn't he NBC? Is yeah, he? he's the NBC Nightly News. So you know they're going to probably cover it. Yeah, I hope so. That's because I don't ha see. I don't have fancy cable stuff. They have affiliates of CNBC and MSNBC. So I, you know, I'm not sure that the mother network. Bob can probably check, but uh, I can check. I mean, I have a computer here. Hey, why don't you check? I know it's going to be on Facebook. They're doing their live streaming for the presidential debate tonight. Are oh, they first really? time oh, ever? They are. First oh. time ever. 
Ah, all right. Well, I could do that. Worst case scenario, I can watch it on my phone. All right, so um, we're, we're making a list and checking it twice to find out if Hillary could ever be naughty instead of nice. Well, and I, I, you mentioned in the first segment that I made a bingo card for those of us who, yeah. don't, who don't like drinking games. One of the other things on the bingo card is Trump's taxes. Do you think Hillary's going to bring up the, oh, yeah. the taxes thing? Sure. She's going to... Listen, guys. No matter what happens in this debate, Hillary's going to come out a winner. You think so? she is going to take on Donald Trump... With everything she's got. Ooh, it's a scary picture of Hillary Clinton up there on the TV. Did you hear that clip? This clip here? Yes, have Jeb play that for you because that the, the, the audio is even more scary. Okay. And bargain collectively. And I will fight back against so-called Started right to Started at the start, work. Jeb. Right to work is, is wrong for workers and wrong for America. Now, having said all this... Why aren't I 50 points ahead, you might ask? Well, the choice for working families has never been clearer. I need your help to get Donald Trump's record out to everybody. Nobody should be fooled. He proudly declared himself 100% right to work. He even hired a union-busting firm to break up an organizing campaign at his hotel in Las Vegas, where you are right now. And he built up his wealth by stiffing small businesses and contractors. That goes against everything we stand for as a country. My dad was a small business. I'm just a businessman. I'm just happy he never did business with Trump. Hmm. I think today is going to be better than a 10-car accident on an interstate in the middle of a winter with a, tr- with a train that carries... Lions, tigers, and bears, oh my. This will be a better wreck than a NASCAR multi-car wreck at Talladega. I don't know, but it's... Speaking of that, let me tell you the channels it's going to be on. All of them? The debate will be broadcast on all the major television networks. ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, PBS, Telemundo, Univision, and cable outlets, CNB, uh, NBS? NBC. It says NBS. Okay, CNN, C-SPAN, Fox News, Fox Business, MSNBC. So as I used to say when I was a kid, Good. this is a true story. This is, and I obviously there are other people who are as, as aged as I am. But you know, to me, when the president was on television when I was ten years old, the president's on all the channels. There's nothing else we can watch. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then we yeah. get cable, and all of a sudden we think it, we're 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 you know protected that we don't have to watch the president when he, he or she comes on. Or I guess it was always a he. <clears throat> See, I think women are more competent than men in most areas. I really do. I, I can tell you that the best people to ever work for me inside my organizations were usually female. However, I will tell you this. When a guy goes off the rails, you can pretty much drag him back to normal pretty quick. You, you, take, a, you take a fight between a couple of guys they're jealous over a girlfriend or whatever it is. Man, you can step in between those guys and say, now, boys, stop it. I want you to shake hands, apologize, and I'll, I'll buy you beer or whatever it is. Happens immediately. It's not, so, not, not the case with females. And I don't want to get any females mad at me here. This is just what I've overseen. I've already complimented you in the highest of ways. <laughs> but when you get a grudge stuck between your ears, you don't know how to forgive. I mean, I, I know that, like, for instance, Jill, my, my uh, in integrator. Executive something. No, she's my, yeah, my in integrator. Um, executive assistant, right-hand person, whatever. Jill knows how to say she's sorry because she knows when she's wrong. I hear sorry, I'm a lot. But there are some people, and I think that's what's going to happen with Hillary. Trump's going to stump her, stump her, stump her, stump her, stump her, and she's going to pop like she did in front of the Senate committee, you know, when they were talking about the, the lives in Benghazi and what does it matter anymore. I don't know why that's not on a TV commercial yet. I don't know why Trump's not running that thing every four minutes with her saying, I don't understand why it's a big deal anymore. And if I was Trump's people, man, I'd just put every single PowerPoint uh, um topic that needs to be talked about jobs i don't know why everybody thinks that's important anymore terrorism i don't think i'm important anymore the economy i don't know why i mean you know i mean I just i'd ruin her that way 
But for whatever reason, they haven't done that. And maybe it's maybe that's the two weeks before. Well, know? it's interesting. You know, um, there's some talk that Trump is, is has intentionally been nice comparatively, definitely in his ads right now. You know, the the Hillary ads that are running right now are negative towards Trump. And Trump doesn't really have, to my knowledge, he doesn't have any negative Hillary commercials running right now. Is that is that fair? Is anybody I don't know. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm not watching much TV anymore. I'm spending a lot more time on the radio you know, listening well, to preachers. I've been listening to the Wild at Heart stuff just dead flat, like for weeks. I think it depends on the state you live in. If it's a battleground state, I'm sure there's people who sing many more commercials than we are. Supposedly, right. the last poll I saw, Trump was up by eight in the state of Iowa. So Hillary may have uh, pulled her ads out of Iowa, thinking that Iowa was a foregone conclusion. She may be pummeling some other state that, uh, you know, like Florida, because, you know, uh, uh, Trump cannot win the election without Florida. So there's a pretty good chance that people in Florida are just being hit nonstop with uh, anti-Trump ads because he has a lot of uh, uh, monetary interest in Florida also. So that's why they probably why they would probably be running their. Well, uh, is, is New York or Florida his home state? What does he claim is his home I think state? New York. New York. New York. Yeah, he's a New okay. Yorker. All right. That he, was, uh, was I think he has golf courses and a lot of. Oh, money sure. invested in the state of florida so. he does that's where he's got uh al clareda or ukaniya or whatever that well there's a lot of any, state any, of his is any place where there's touristy stuff i mean trump's got touristy stuff all over so. all right uh go ahead frank well there was a um a um advisor on last night that they were trying to get some political advice for both candidates and and the guy said that um or gal, I don't remember which, said that uh, Hillary needs to jab Trump and try to cause Trump to come unglued. But I think it's more likely that Trump, that Trump will jab her and she would be the one most likely to come unglued, in my well, opinion. What does Trump look like unglued? It's what Trump look like, looks like all the time. Right. Right? Yeah, well, yeah, I do. Hmm, hmm. Hillary, but we've seen video of Hillary losing it. Hillary has been said hmm. in secret ser- by, by top secret service people to say to have a really foul mouth, a foul temper, goes on screaming tirades, and actually threw stuff at the president in the uh, bedroom. And the secret service had to intervene and say, "Hey, look, we we know this is a private marital spat, but we also have to protect him because he's our job one to protect." And I'd like and to see Bill show up with a black eye. He did. Day. Oh, he did. According to according to that Secret Service agent, he come popping down with a black eye that was covered up with makeup, a poor job of makeup covering, and um, that's why they told her we you know we can't have this. We you know we, we want to try to stay out of your private marital business, but you can't be uh, you know throwing things at him and because supposedly she picked up a lamp and threw it at him. Good for you, Hillary. I may, she may have just got a vote. I don't know. <laughs> All right, we're going to come back, and we're going to talk a little bit about the debate tonight and what do you think are the most important topics that need to be discussed. I'm sorry. I, I know it's not Tuesday. I, this is just too big. We're going we're gonna to talk about Mark Poole is going to be in here next hour, and we're going to talk about the new challenges facing seniors that we have no concept that are there, at least that I don't. Hillary. And he, that's the new thing facing seniors, <laughs> Hillary. He's with seniors on the move, so he'll be back. But right now, really quickly, guys, we need to sing happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Frankie. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How old were you? 59, and oh. it's all Bob's fault. <laughs> all right, we're coming back live here on The Truth. Yep, it's Truth. Told you, 99.3. Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, High Bee, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us. 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up 
with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu and some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make Make you smile. That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going to the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. <laughs> 22 minutes before the top of the hour, top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News, and then us again in the second hour with Mark Poole from Seniors on the Move. I want to I want to talk about what seniors have ahead of them. Um, and I don't know if Mark can get into politics, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, and you know what happens when we assume, you make a something out of you and me, um, I'm assuming it's going to be worse under a Democratic president than it is a Republican candidate. But I could be wrong on that. So Mark will be in the next hour, and we'll talk about that a little bit. 515-244-0077. That's the number where I can hear your voice if you just want your comment to be read on air. 515-809-0993. Frank? You missed the big news over the weekend that uh, we talked about last Friday. Okay, what was that? That Cruz uh, endorsed Trump? Cruz officially endorsed Donald Trump. So I wonder what that does to the hashtag never Trump people. Oh, they're just coming unglued. He's a traitor. He's a... Uh... No, that's what they agreed to do, though. They all agreed once on stage at one of the Republican debates that each one of them would support the Republican nominee. Yeah. So why is he a, a traitor if he's doing what he promised he'd do? Principle principle because he was the big ted cruz was the big guy who was standing on principle you know he he made the big stink and i think brian myers mentioned this friday ted cruz really um some people said committed political suicide on uh, at the rnc convention when he didn't uh really kind of come out in support of trump by name at that event uh he got in a lot of trouble for doing that and most uh Cruz people applauded him for standing on principle, saying that he would vote for someone who was going to defend the Constitution and he uh, and that sort of thing. And so uh, now they think, well, I guess he's bowed the knee uh, to to the Trump powers that be. But the interesting thing is, Mac, I think there's a way that a guy like Ted Cruz could have said, I'm going to vote for Trump, but still I encourage you to do whatever's best, or he could have not said that. I mean, it's it's one thing to, to, to actually vote for Trump. It's another thing to send out a mass email to all your supporters. It's another thing to put on your Facebook page why you're going to vote for Trump and encouraging people to vote for Trump, and here are the key issues. I mean, he made a political statement that he didn't need to make. He made it for some reason. 
He made it because it benefited him in some way. He got something out of it. Politicians don't do this stuff unless they're going to get something out of it. He'll get a cabinet position. Well, he's going to maybe, maybe maybe he'll be a Supreme Court nominee. He's going to get something out of this. He a lawyer. He yes. is, yeah. Is he? Okay. Harvard yeah. Grant. Oh, that's right. He's a big constitutional lawyer. Right. So he could have just kept his mouth shut. But what is it principled to go back on your promise? He could have raised his hand in that first debate and said, no, there's certain people up here in this uh, in this uh, field of 17, 16, 17, that I, I won't support. He could have said that and, and, and made a disclaimer right off the bat. So he made the promise. So he's... He's up the creek either way he goes because if you know, if but again, he, you can you can uphold that. I don't I don't disagree with you, Frank. But I'm saying that he can uphold that promise by voting for Trump. It's again the point is that he made a stand. He made a public stand here to say I'm going to vote for Donald Trump and you should too. And here's why. That's different than just doing the thing. Well, sure, but in a, 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 an endorsement is generally speaking, I endorse and hey, follow me is generally what an endorsement is. Otherwise, you know, that's just one vote. Right, but every vote counts, right? No, I'm well, kidding. I mean, but exactly. That's, but that's what the thing, though. That's why for Ted Cruz and Ted Cruz supporters, I think it was so upsetting because Ted Cruz could have upheld his part of the pledge by voting. It, it, it did not. He did not have to. Con, he did not have to uh, endorse publicly endorse Donald Trump to uphold the pledge. But if he has any political viability in the Republican Party and Republican Party fundraising for him for if he wants to do something in the future, or they're saying that he, that potentially his Senate seat may be in risk, that 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 he may not be getting the support he needs in Texas to run. Re, you know, run again for senator. Is he, is he run? Is he doing that now? Is is it the selection cycle? I don't think he's he's up this cycle. But okay, because if he is, that was Chris's answer. The reason that he would come out and do what he was doing is he needs the Republican Party to get behind him, money wise. But forget if, probably just endorsement. But endorsement comes with that. But he needs the money in the Republican Party in the state of Texas to to be re-elected senator but if he plans on running in 2020 should trump lose he needs the political he needs a political machinery behind him and he's not well liked by the establishment anyway because he's seen as a far-right conservative so he's not in their warm graces anyway so anything else that he could do to alienate that is in his detriment so he better uh, warm up to the party because the Mitch McConnells and all those people don't, uh, John Boehner's and all those people don't like him to start with because what? of his filibuster annex and some of the stuff he was doing. And the feedback that we got on Friday from the Never Trump crowd was that although it's most of them were true supporters, most of them, not all Never Trumpers were true supporters, but uh, as it was made clear Friday, they were. This movement is a Never Trump movement. It's not a we're mad that our guy didn't win, so to heck with everybody Horse else. Horse hockey. It, it was it was a never Trump movement. No, Agreed. Uh, well, I don't believe that. I sat here with those four uh, never Trump people, and they were all who Ted Cruz people. Ted Cruz, They're not necessarily. Well, okay, they uh, are technically they were. Yeah, technically. Well, technically, what I was going to say. Well, one in particular I'm thinking of uh, is considerably more libertarian. So uh, Joel is who I'm speaking That's of. So just Joel. Joel Liber- oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, didn't I mean, but he, but he, but he was uh, behind Ted Cruz. So you're right. All those people here in the state of Iowa were were Ted Cruz They're folks. Bad losers. But that's not. Hey, I was I was around. I heard their talk too. It wasn't it wasn't just that we're bad losers. And Steve Riker, who's one of the most outspoken, uh, a friend of mine and a very outspoken Never Trump guy, even said. Most of the other Republican candidates, he could have easily gotten behind. Yeah, Ted Cruz didn't win, but had Jeb gotten in, he could have even he could have even got behind Jeb. Or I just or don't understand why you why why you go for a guy who's going to kill your party. If they vote for Hillary or Johnson or anybody else, it's going to hurt the Republican Party. It's going to hurt the Republican Party downstream. It's going to hurt the Republican Party down ticket. And, I, and they've said this before. I spent too much time in my life in politics. I, I and they've they've said this already. And I'm not saying this for me, but I'm saying the Never Trump community has said that Donald Trump is going to destroy the Republican Party blah-bitty, because blah-bitty, because blah-bitty, Donald blah-bitty. Trump because Donald Trump is not a uh, constitutional conservative. He's not. Tim Overland acknowledged right there at the end of the table that that, that 
Trump has pulled back the veil of the sausage making that is out at a lot of the Republicans who've been who guys like me has faithfully voted for since 1976. I've never voted for a Democrat in my life that I knew of, except for somebody maybe for uh, you know environmentalist control of something. You know, uh, I've always voted straight Republican ticket, so I've had a lot of people lie to me and go up there and do exactly what they said they wouldn't do. So. Uh, at least Tim Overland stepped up and said, hey, at least, uh, you know, Trump is exposing some of these people for the for the liars. They really are. All right. 515-244-0077. That's the number you can call us on or you can reach us on the hashtag never Trump line at 515-809-0993. Uh, Mark Poole from Seniors on the Move will be in next hour and we're going to have a Absolutely. candid conversation about seniors. What are they? What are they up against? And I, I, sh- I ought to stop saying they, because I guess I'm about one of them. I mean, I do get my senior discount at some restaurants, but I'm only fifty-seven. I don't. I never thought you really got to be a senior until you were sixty, sixty-five. But it also depends on how you look. I look pretty good. <laughs> no, what are you talking about? No, I don't. I'm, that was a terrible thing. I'm sorry. I'm not that. I don't care about looks. You know that. Bob, you ugly coon, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, you can go and say that you're you're a senior, and people would look at you and say, yeah, you probably are. Oh, yeah, that's true. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Because <laughs> you've got that beautiful white hair, and you're growing your Santa Claus beard. I am. I love to play Santa Claus at Christmas time. I have my own Santa Claus outfit. And uh, I went to my uh, my barber, or whatever you want to call him nowadays. It's Father Tattoo. So, yeah. what, he, not a bar. Is he a barber? Is that the official title? Uh, he's stylist. I was stylist? Say, he probably falls in the hairstylist category. Okay. He's pretty technically apt. And he was smart enough because I told him to trim it off. You know, not off off, but trim it down to that I just shaved, you know, two days ago look. And he said, Mac, when's Santa Claus start for you? And I said, oh, about Thanksgiving. Well, you know, you're talking about maybe two months and not to, to get that full Santa Claus beard. So I'm growing the beard up. All right. We're coming back. Going to talk a little bit about Wild at Heart. And a couple things I learned that I want to share with you when we come back live and in color here on NBC on The Truth. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, Hy-Vee, and Graziano. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common, everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Ten minutes before the top of the hour, 3.50, Salem Radio Network News in the next hour, and then Mark Poole from Seniors on the Move. I want to talk about some of the things that uh, seniors are facing. Uh, you know, we, we, we think that as we are uh, growing older in this uh, modern era, that we have it better than we did before. Um, I'm not sure that's the case, but 
I'm not the one to answer that. Mark Poole is, and so he'll be here next hour to talk about that. All right, so understand, when it comes to Wild at Heart, I don't have any skin in this game except the skin that I've got on my body. In other words, I'm not compensated. I'm, I paid for my thing to Wild at Heart. They tried to tell me, oh, Mac, you don't have to pay for it. I said, yeah, I kind of do because I talk about you on the air. And if you give me the thing for free, then it's going to be seen as, well, I'm really talking about an endorsement. And so this is just me who went to my first Wild at Heart boot camp and uh, was blown away. I don't know if all boot camps, men's retreats, uh, you know, this kind of stuff is all this amazing. I'm going to go to my second uh, boot camp, I guess you'd call it, when I, if, if I choose to do the walk to Emmaus, or Emmaus uh, which is coming up in February. But I, I want to tell you some of the important things that I learned. Um, every woman is born with two questions in the back of her beautiful mind. And that is, do you find me beautiful? And do you delight in me? Uh, are, that, that's not my thoughts. That's what God, the creator, wrote on Eve's heart. And every other woman who's ever born, do you find me beautiful? And do you delight in me? And remember, it doesn't say, do you think I look beautiful? This isn't about looks. This is about inside. We all know. I'm, I'm thinking of somebody in my head right now, which is drop-dead gorgeous woman. And she's evil on the inside, or she's dark on the inside, or she's hateful on the inside, or she's non-forgiving on the inside, or she's greedy on the inside. Whatever it is. You know, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. And when I behold her, <laughs> um, beauty comes from the inside, not the outside. Now, I will admit, I didn't know that as a young man. Uh, thank God that he's taught me that in my older years. So every woman is born with, do you find me beautiful and do you delight in me? Do I do, I do something for you? Do, do, I, do I make something stir within you? And this is not about lust. Oh, it may be about an emotional attraction, which sometimes boys, icky boys, can say that's lust or a physical. Uh, but sometimes it's just sitting on the red couch in the red chair and just talking for hours and hours and hours. That's what I find delightful. Now, what is every man born with? Every man is born with the question, do I have what it takes? That's what's written on your heart. Do I have what it takes? And every man is born to, one, fight a battle. That's not sticks and baseball bats in the backyard. That's a spiritual battle. God does not care about boxing or wrestling or ninja or, you know, throwing rocks. He cares about whether we are equipped to fight a spiritual battle. Then God tells us that we all have an adventure to live. Now, there would be some people that would tell you that's about climbing mountains. That's about driving fast in a car around and around and around and around and around. That's taking a ball and going back and forth and back and forth and back. And that's what we're called to be an adventure in. No. The adventure to live, men, is our life together. To serve others. To serve your wife as Jesus served and loved the church. And I got to tell you, when we were talking about that, there was like 160 guys, I think, 159, 160 guys in this room down at Wesley Acres, which is a, or maybe not Wesley Acres, but it's the Methodist. Aquabi. Aquabi down south in Indianola. Beautiful place. The adventure to live is to love our mates, our spouses, like Jesus loved the church. And Jesus understand remember how much he loves us do you remember how much he loves us he died for the church he died so we could move forward in life be forgiven of sin be repentant and joined once again with our creator hand in hand arm in arm walking this life out of sanctification so the moment that my body stops ceasing my spirit is set free. I'll never be free on this earth like I will be in heaven. 
And Jesus is doing everything he can to prepare us for that freedom. The last thing that a man is called to do is to rescue the beauty. And I had a tough time with that this weekend. Guys, we can all say this. Sometimes the rescue doesn't, or sometimes the beauty doesn't want to be rescued. And if they do want to be rescued, it's, it's, it's not of Jesus. It's not of God. It's a rescue that is rescue from um, being found or convicted of what the Bible says. Well, you don't have to follow the Bible, honey. I'll, I'll, I'll do that myself. You just go ahead and be an unforgiving, you know, whatever. The beauty to rescue might be your mother, might be your sister, might be your aunt. Maybe it's your pastor's wife. Maybe there's more than one beauty in your life. And again, if you want to exchange the term beauty for the name Eve, you can, because it's the same thing, rescue Eve. See, Adam failed to rescue Eve. You know, I always hear this garbage from Frank. I it was the woman's fault. She's the one that took oh, the, the bed, and then it, it was all, it was all, if he had nothing to do with it, he had everything to do with it because he had a battle to fight spiritually, an adventure to live, and a life with her, and a beauty to rescue, and he failed all three. Our Creator designed her for you. Jesus came to save what was lost. Validation of who we are as a man can't come from the beauty. You understand that, guys? That's tough to hear, but it's true. The only place that we can seek validation as a man is from our Creator. Because if we seek validation from the beauty, from Eve, remember, then we give her the power to unvalidate us. And anybody who's ever been married, anybody who's ever had a close relationship with a woman knows that the power they hold to unvalidate us far outweighs the power they have to validate us. Jesus came to restore the brokenhearted and set the captives free. And men, that's what we need to do. We need to take control of our heart. Don't give your heart to a woman. Give your heart to Jesus. And then he, he with his wisdom, will give the woman what he wants her to have. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted and to set the captives free. I hope you take the time to read the book Wild at Heart. Because next time we do this boot camp a year from now, I want to see you there, okay? You want to talk about it? We'll talk about it. We're coming back live after Salem Radio Network News because this, this is the truth.